Alright guys, welcome back to Redstone for Dummies. This video is also about basic stuff, but again it's part of the uh, basic knowledge you need when doing things with redstone, so I'm not gonna skip it. First of all, if you could compare redstone to something that we all know, it would be a wire on which you can apply current to send information. So redstone can be put underground to create a redstone or an electric circuit if you want. And uh, this circuit has two possible states, either on or off. I'm going to use this lever here to turn it either on or turn it off. So I'm not going to go over anything that's deeper than that today. Basically, there is a lot of different ways to input current in Minecraft. And today we're going to go over all of them as of Minecraft 1.8. And this is why I'm calling this video Inputs. Alright, so again, in this video, we're going to go over all the different inputs. The wooden button is crafted by using a plank of any kind in your crafting grid. It will give you a button, which will basically, when you right-click on it, will output a current for about one second and a half, and then turn back off. So it's just a press button, turn on, turn off. It's pretty simple. Stone button. Use a stone block to get a stone button, and um, again, it works the same as a wooden button. The only difference though is that with a wooden button, you can uh, activate it by uh, shooting an arrow at it, like this, and it won't work if you're shooting a stone button, just like that. And keep in mind that the um, power will stay on as long as the arrow is in the button right here, if I pick it up power goes off. A lever made by using a cobblestone with a stick on it will create this and you can just turn it on for as long as you want and it will stay on until you turn it back off. Stone pressure plate made by using two stone blocks just like that and it is going to output current whenever a mob or the player walks on it just like this. And again it's like a button so step on it once you get off it will turn back off wooden pressure plate same thing as a stone one except you can activate it by putting an entity on it like an item and again it will stay on until i pick up the item and then it it turns off the iron pressure plate works just like an, a wooden or a stone pressure plate but you've got to put heavy stuff on it and by heavy i mean a lot of stuff so if you want to put an item like this, or if you just walk on it, the strength of the signal here is really, really weak. It goes only one block long. If I want to have a two block signal, you're going to have to put uh, more than 10 items. So if I go like this, I'm going to put all my inventory right here. It's going to be nine items. And again, it's got to be different items. If they stack into like a whole stack, it will not work. So now there is nine items. Let's put one more, that's 10, and if I put 11, you're going to see that the signal goes to too long. The gold pressure plate is just like the iron one, but it's not as heavy. And by that I mean that you have to put only one item to get the signal to increase. So if you put one, like this, it goes one, put a second one, it goes two, and three, and four, and it goes like this. So again... A lot less item for that pressure plate and like every 10 item for the iron one. A redstone torch is basically just an item you put on the ground or on the block and it will output a signal on every side and you craft it by putting a redstone dust over a stick. The tripwire hook is crafted by using an iron ingot, a stick and a wooden planks and basically you just put strings in between the two tripwire hooks and it creates that little curve rope on the ground and when you walk in between the two tripwires here it's going to output a signal on the blocks right here on each side and that string here can be as long as you want and here it's uh, three blocks long and it still works the same and it's good to keep in mind that if you break the string here it will output a really really quick pulse of signal here you saw it again there we go. And if you want to work around that, you can just break it using a shear. It's going to break it. 
and not output a signal. It's just a good thing to know. A redstone block is made by using nine redstone dust just like this to get a big red block like that. And again, it will output a signal on each side. It's basically like a redstone torch, but you can move it using pistons, which I'm going to go over in another video. And one last thing, guys, it's good to keep in mind that a redstone signal will not go forever. It will lose strength as it goes. So the strongest signal you can get is like that, when it's right beside a lever or a button or a pressure plate. And basically, if you go more than 15 blocks, right here, you see it's really, really weak. The 15th block is on, but if you keep going after, it's off. So you've, you're limited to how long you can make your circuit. But there is a way to uh, work around that, and it's gonna go in another video. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it helped you in understanding the different inputs for a redstone circuit. If it did, please leave a comment or like the video, and don't forget to subscribe and like my Facebook page. Link in the description below to get notified whenever a new video comes up. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good day. Oh, <laughs>